Last night I finished my book. And then I thought, you know what? I'm gonna pick up the next one, read 10 pages just to get like a little a little taste, a little amuse bouche of what's ahead of me. Suddenly it was 5 a.m. and I read the whole book in one night. If I look slightly spacey, it's because I haven't slept all night. Also, I just that's just what I'm like. The book is Hemingway and Geldorf by Jerome Tussil. I'm gonna go with Tussil. Um, it's about Ernest Hemingway and Martha Gellhorn. They were both writers and also married. I don't know why I said that under that tone. Married. Never married. The book is set up in five parts, which is also how I will structure my video. The first part is called Hemingway. Hemingway was a dude who wrote a bunch of books, whatever. Martha Gellhorn. Part two. Martha Gellhorn. She was tall and blonde with long, sensuous legs that seemed to begin just under her armpits. Guess whether or not this book was written by a man. For as long as she could remember, she had wanted to be a writer. And the writer she admired the most, the one whom she tried not to imitate too closely lest he overshadow her own creative efforts, was the most successful and famous writer of his generation. Martha grew up in the US in St. Louis. She wants to be a writer, and to that end she first moves to New York and later to Paris. She picks up sort of small writing assignments here and there, a little bit of journalism, a little, po a little bit of copy editing, but it's not really going anywhere. Apparently, she picked up the nickname Blonde Peril during this time, which... Goals. You know, writing, having affairs, vibing. Martha's mother was in college with Eleanor Roosevelt of being the wife of the US president fame. So her mother, Edna, writes a letter to Eleanor Roosevelt saying, Hey, why don't you invite my daughter to the White House for a weekend? Which she does. Martha meets Eleanor Roosevelt, they get on like a fucking house on fire, and they become lifelong friends. On the same weekend, another guest at the White House is H.G. Wells. Wells was already an old man of 68 at this stage of his life. Along with Jules Verne, he had been dubbed one of the fathers of science fiction, the author of genre classics such as The War of the Worlds and The Time Machine. He was an outspoken socialist and pacifist who wrote about other things, including history and social problems, which resonated with Martha far more than his science fiction did. Martha's short novel, The Trouble I've Seen, was published first in England thanks to the efforts of H.G. Wells, functioned as a literary agent, lining her publisher and negotiating her advance, but also contributed a preface which he talked about Martha's lucidity and penetration. Martha, her career now well underway, starts getting kind of skeeved out by this man in his 60s who's creeping on her, so she takes the only avenue open to her. Martha could stand it no longer. She sent a telegram to the famous comedian Charlie Chaplin, a friend of Wells, encouraging, begging him to invite Wells for an extended visit to Hollywood. Love to go on a weekend visit to the White House with Eleanor Roosevelt and H.T. Wells and then write telegrams to Charlie Chaplin. Normal stuff. At this point, Martha Gellhorn is kind of over dating journalists, having affairs and getting creeped on by 60-year-old men, and she decides she'd much rather get creeped on by a middle-aged man, Ernest Hemingway. She goes to his favorite bar, has a drink, he sees her in the bar, invites her to his house, and introduces her to his wife. Apparently, Pauline has a little bit of deja vu, because when she met Hemingway, he took her home with her and introduced her to his first wife. Guess who Martha met at the end of their marriage, the, the next? They'll go out as they came in. Very true for that guy. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Hemingway and Gellhorn start an affair. Incidentally, the Spanish Civil War is going on. Incidentally? Yes, of course. It's not like they fucking caused the Spanish Civil War. Although, hmm. Part three, uncivil war. You get it, it's a pun because of the, the, the word civil has several meanings. It was a civil war, but it wasn't a civil war, if you know what I mean. Now, the Spanish Civil War, for those who don't know, and in the words of Milton Wolfe, you had to be there to know what had happened, he said. Basically, it was a war waged by the army and monarchists led by General Franco to reverse the 1936 election, in which a leftist government of several parties was elected. It was called the Popular Front. Franco brought over Moorish mercenaries, a paid army, 
to destroy the elected government. In the very first weeks of the war, long before Moscow decided to help the Spanish government, the Republican side, as they were called, Hitler and Mussolini, were pouring in stuff to help Franco and the nationalists. The final factor was England putting an arm on France to close the border between France and Spain to cut off military aid to the Republicans, and FDR went along. Oh, and another thing that happened. While they were in Key West, Hemingway got a package from his mother, which contained, among other things, the revolver his father used to end his life. A few nights after she arrived, the Florida hotel suffered a direct hit from a rebel shell that shook the walls and sent plaster cascading onto the heads of its inhabitants. Dozens of prostitutes came running out of the rooms of various correspondents onto the landing that overlooked the inner courtyard. As they passed, dashing French writer and aviator Antoine de saint exupéry handed each of them a grapefruit from his private stash. Such mean stuff. Was everyone in Spain? Literally everyone famous shows up in the story. I'm fucking waiting for Dixie de Bilio to show up. Also, allegedly, Errol Flynn was in Spain during the Civil War. That's not the alleged part, he definitely was there. But Errol Flynn was in, <laughs> was in Spain during the Civil War and allegedly was spying for the Nazis. Errol Flynn cancelled. That's ruined Captain Blood forever. Okay, there is so much to yell about in this book. Literal spy shit. Literal spy shit. Second World War. Anti-fascist. Spy shit. Anyways, the point of this video is to say, hey, check out this book. It's quite interesting. Oh, and uh, the book was the basis for an HBO movie. I remember thinking the first time I saw him, who is that large, dirty man who has disgustingly sold clothes? Oh my god, that's Ernest Hemingway. Called, fittingly, Hemingway and Gellhorn. Considering there's two very famous people in it, Nicole Kidman and Clive Owen, Yet I've never heard of it. That makes me assume it's really bad. But this isn't about a movie. This is about a book. Okay. Okay. I have to sleep. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, <laughs> uh, why not subscribe? I'd be really thrilled. Uh, also, maybe consider reading this book if you wanna.